Hello everyone, welcome to Digital Health News. We are here today at uh, NASCOM COE AI Disrupt event here in Bangalore. It's a great day for uh, innovation and uh, meetup of all the innovative minds here in Bangalore. And uh, we have with us Mr. Anil Kumar Madhugulla, uh, who is the uh, Senior Director and uh, Site Leader for Baxter R&D. Thank you so much sir, for joining us here today. Thank you. Uh, I heard you, uh, I heard your uh, uh, you know, speech at, uh, uh, at the uh, opening of the event and uh, you spoke in great deal about artificial intelligence in healthcare. So I would just like to start with that question. Uh, what do you think are the use cases for artificial intelligence uh, in healthcare from your perspective? That's a great question. I mean, as Baxter, actually, we work on both diagnostics and therapeutics. So a large part of what we do is about really saving a life in a critical care setting, uh, which is very significant in the hospitals. So, I mean, if you look at some of the trends that are happening in AI, I think, I mean, we have got these language models, but I believe uh, just the language models are not sufficient. We need to go towards the reasoning models because whenever you're in a healthcare context in a critical care, there are a lot of things that are interacting. They could be, you know, cardiology, pulmonology, you know, I mean, there, there are different departments that are interacting, your, your uh, uh, you know, your fluid management in a body. So we need to actually build, integrate these this disciplines and build reasoning models that can help decision making and information at the point of care for be it the nurses or the doctors and that can really save a life. AI has massive use cases in terms of uh, clini clinical side of the healthcare but also on the non-clinical side the documentation side of healthcare. Uh, what do you think what are the technologies that will really really help uh, the clinicians and nurses to reduce the burden of documentation or the non-clinical operational part of it? No, absolutely there? I mean that's a great question actually and as Baxter we focus on clinical operational and service. The three dimensions because uh, and especially actually I mean our lot of focus is on the nurse because it's her time that goes into saving a life at the bedside. So right from you know I mean her operational efficiency right I mean let's say at times we keep thinking uh, let's say the nurses change shifts yes. and there's so much information they have to give across the shift change mm -hmm. and instead of focusing on the patient they're actually filling in a lot of forms right. How can we kind of automate that right. And let's say, I mean, actually as, as Baxter also, when we look at uh, nurses, let's say they can, because of the extreme pressure situations they are in, they may actually make mistakes in entering the drug values on an infusion mm. pump. Let's say instead of 10, you enter 100, mm. it can be very fatal. So as Baxter, actually we work on dose error reduction systems. I mean, we look at it very broadly. Let's say there are five rights to a patient, you know, when you do infusions. Hmm. There's a right to the right patient first, right medicine, right time, right route, right? So we've got all of these handled. So we actually think a lot about these and build systems that can improve their efficiency. You briefly touched upon the large language model and la large reasoning model uh, in your speech. Also, you spoke about how we have to evolve and move beyond large language models now and go towards large reasoning model. Could you just explain that bit to me? See, as I said, maybe reasoning for us, I mean, so let's say you take a case of, uh, you know, maybe sepsis, right? Mm. A patient is into a, he, he comes in with a fever and uh, anything can happen in the next two, three weeks now. Now, is the system having a way to look at all these trends? I mean, there, there are multiple things that happen. You'll have mm. your blood tests, you'll have your, you know, your uh, vital tests, right? right? I mean, there are different things that are going, different medications that are going on. So the question is, how do we integrate these disciplines to create a reasoning model that can help, you know, maybe probabilistically understand how do I give enough information to enable decisions, right? So that is actually a, a large shift in our thinking that should happen. Where as I said, I mean, there are enough dashboards around a nurse. There's a lot of information, hmm. but how can the information change into an insight? that we can take an action on, I think is, is the way to go forward. Just one last question from your vantage point, as you said, uh, Baxter, uh, uh, you know, deals in range of products and across uh, therapeutics as well as diagnostic from your vantage point, what do you think are uh, five technologies, digital technologies that will make a definite mark on healthcare industry in sure. coming years? So one I feel is content synthesis, right? I mean, there's a lot happening in there's a lot of data around, mm. right? And uh, be it the nurses, doctors, or even us as a company, the, the data that is increasing is, is, is doubling up, let's say every six months, right? So how can we synthesize that and make it available to anyone, right? There's a big trend that's happening. Right. That's one. 
Next one, if I see, I think there's a there's a less amount of research that has happened on the vision-based care, mm. right? So now, when I say vision, it's all about you know 3D data. We all so far have been on two-dimensional data, right? But now, let's say I, I, I'm in a surgical room, I'm having the video of a surgery. Mm. What can I do with it, right? So the vision-based care, there's a lot that can happen, and I've seen or heard companies that are saying that eye is the vision for your body, not just the eye. Right. And if I can combine I mean, data from the eye with other things, maybe I can do much deeper inferences. Another is uh, speech. Right. I mean, you can, uh, given the burden of, you know, so many devices across, I mean, the various people have to operate. Maybe voice can help us, you know, change some of these uh, things dramatically. Another key, I think, very burgeoning field, maybe not yet mature, is the agentic AI. Right. So now you have got different and disparate systems. And let's say if you want to take an action, right, based on the relevant or various informations that are there, and let's say the devices that have to talk to each other, the nurses have to get a lot more information. I think agentic AI, if we can think deeper in healthcare, I think can revolutionize and make a nurse's or a doctor's life much, much more I mean, uh, efficient. Absolutely. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Mr. Anil, for the uh, insightful communication and insightful conversation today. And thank you so much. Uh, we'll see you today. Thanks a lot for the opportunity.